welcome to Firebase release notes for April, where we cover recent big and small updates from Firebase. And we have eight topics today, so let's dig in right away. At Cloud Next in Las Vegas, a few weeks ago, we announced a lot of updates to Firestore, so let's go through them. I already pre-announced that you can now have inequality and range conditions on multiple fields in Firestore, and we just added this feature to our Flutter SDK too. Since the feature didn't require any API changes, it was mostly a matter of removing some assertions from our code and adding more unit tests, so that you can now write queries like these in Flutter 2. Having queries with inequalities and range conditions on multiple fields opens up a lot of possibilities, but it also means that you now have to optimize queries for performance and cost. In such queries, the database may now have to scan index entries for documents that it does not return. Such scanning of unreturned index entries is a new operation that you're charged for. Specifically, you're charged one document read for each up to 1,000 index entries that are scanned but filtered. Those are the red items in this animation. And that's why it's important to optimize your queries that use range and inequality conditions in multiple fields. To help with that, the Node and Java SDKs have a new API to explain how a query will be executed. When you call it like this, the API doesn't really execute the query, but it shows you what index or indexes will be used for it. You can also tell the SDK to actually execute the query. Then it will give you a full analysis of what happened, like we see here. It shows you how many index entries were scanned and how many documents were returned. Check the documentation and blog post that are linked for full details. The Node and Python SDKs for Firestore now support storing vector data and documents. Here's an example of how to write vector data from Node. The most popular use case for these vectors right now is to store Gen AI embeddings. And here's an example of how to store an embedding vector from a cloud function in Python. Once you've defined a vector index on this data, you can then search for the nearest matches to a vector value that you specify, as we can see here. This specific query finds the five documents whose embedding field vector is the most similar to the value that we pass in. We also added Firestore to nine new locations. Johannesburg, Finland, Madrid, Berlin, Turin, Milan, Santiago, Iowa, and Columbus. In fact, you can now deploy Firestore in any available Google Cloud region, so that you can minimize serving latency and maximize the data privacy of your users. If you're using Gen 2 Cloud Functions for Firebase, our latest SDKs for Node and Python introduce an optional auth context for Firestore triggers. This means that your Cloud Functions code can now determine which Firebase Authentication user triggered the function, even when this information is not available in the document's path or data itself. Here's a code sample of what it looks like in Python when a document is created. For now, this auth context is only available for Firestore triggers. But if you have another favorite trigger type that you'd like to see this for, drop a comment below or file a feature request on firebase.uservoice.com. You can now view and manage the non-default Firestore databases of a project in the Firebase console too, as we can see here. As I mentioned last month, we've promoted the latest dev release of the Flutter Fire CLI to general availability. Now, there are a lot of changes under the hood, but the first one I spotted was the addition of Windows in the list of platforms, as we can see here. And finally, Gemini in Firebase is now available as a public preview. You can get started by clicking the Gemini icon in the top right of the Firebase console, and then you can either ask it a question in the chat interface or look for contextual help in other places in the console. Those were all the updates we have for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Frank Orpuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.